Our lesson this morning from the Old Testament is from the prophet Micah that Bob read to us. Micah says, someone who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days, will come forth from Bethlehem. That prophecy is about the coming of the Messiah who would bring the people back to Israel, back to God, and bring peace and security. Something that people had been waiting for for a very long time. The Gospel of Luke tells of Mary's visit to the home of her relative, Elizabeth. As a reminder, I want to take you back to the beginning of the story, because we sort of started in the middle. Luke begins with the story of Elizabeth's husband, Zechariah. Zechariah was a priest, and he was in the sanctuary doing his priestly duties when he was visited by the angel Gabriel. Gabriel told him that his wife, would bear him a son. Well, Zechariah had a little trouble <laughs> at first. He pointed out to Gabriel that they were both quite old. And he wasn't so sure that this was possible. Then in verses 24 and 25, Luke tells us, after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived. And for five months, she remained in seclusion, hidden. Elizabeth said, this is what the Lord has done for me when he looked favorably on me and took away the disgrace I have endured among my people. So you might wonder, why was Elizabeth disgraced? Because she was barren. She couldn't get pregnant until now. So she got pregnant in her old age and she remained hidden for five months. Then Luke tells us in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to Galilee, to Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and her name was Mary. And Mary set out and hurried to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the home of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. So here we have an old woman who tried her entire adult life to get pregnant and couldn't and a young virgin who got pregnant for some unknown reason, unexplained reason, except for the presence of God. I can tell you quite certainly that if I, as an old barren woman, got pregnant all of a sudden, I would not be happy about it. It would not seem like a blessing at all. <laughs> Definitely would not seem like a blessing. So let's just take a few minutes and think about the situation of these two women, one old, one very young, and the culture that they were living in at that time to help us understand what this meant to them and to the people around them, to their loved ones. During the first century, back when this took place, in the time of Mary and Joseph and Elizabeth and Zechariah, according to historians, life outside the home was reserved for Jewish boys and men. Boys were taught to read so they could read the scriptures. Girls were not. 
Once a girl reached puberty around age 12, she was eligible for betrothal and marriage. So Mary was probably 12 or 13 years old when she became engaged or betrothed to Joseph. Home and family life was established after betrothal. The man gave a token to the young woman as a sign of the promise to marry. And a document, basically a contract, was drawn up with the terms of the marriage and the dowry. At the time of the betrothal, the young woman's property belonged to the man. And the marriage would usually take place after about a year to give her time, basically, to get used to the idea. So what did people do to earn their daily bread? Well, we have some hints in the Bible. They worked the land. They were trained by, the men were trained by their father to be a carpenter or a tent maker or a potter. And the women were expected to produce children and to take care of the home. A man could divorce his wife if she was unable to produce children for 10 years. Luke tells us that Elizabeth and her husband Zechariah belonged to the families that descended from Aaron and were priests. So Zechariah was a priest, and it was expected if he had a son, that his son would become a priest. But she could never get pregnant to continue the family line for years and years until now. We need to understand that during that time, there was no knowledge of medicine the way that we understand it now. People didn't know what germs were. They didn't know about hormonal fluctuations or other issues that, that can cause infertility. They didn't know anything about any of that scientific stuff that we've learned in the 2000 years since then. All they knew was that people were sometimes well and sometimes sick. And they thought that if things were going well, you were blessed, God blessed you. And so things went well. And if things went badly, you were at least ignored by God or maybe cursed. Maybe you were cursed. So it was a terrible, terrible thing if a woman couldn't get pregnant. She was ashamed. People assumed she'd done something wrong and God had cursed her. So when Elizabeth became pregnant and Mary son suddenly became pregnant, they accepted this as an incredible blessing that God had given to them. Of course, the presence of the angel Gabriel probably added to that feeling of being blessed. Um, but the way of thinking about it in general was quite different back then. The thing that I want us to focus on is how they talked about this blessing. Mary says, God has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. She recognized this as a reversal of fortune, as the world being turned upside down by what God had done. That's what this is all about. Recognizing the unexpected, sudden, completely unpredictable reversal 
in their lives as a blessing through these young women and through the women of that time whose entire reputation and standing in the society was completely wrapped up in their ability to produce children at the right time, not before marriage, but during marriage, not when you're too old, but at the right time. That was their purpose. And suddenly their purpose has been fulfilled. Unexpectedly, their lives have been completely shifted, turned around, turned upside down really. They could have taken this sudden change as a tragedy, that they weren't ready for it. What has God done to me? But they didn't, they took it as a blessing. And where did this incredible thing happen? Was it in the holy city of Jerusalem? The magnificent, magnificent holy city of Jerusalem? No, it was in a tiny little backwater town called Bethlehem. So how can this help us in our journey through life? Things have changed a lot since then but a lot of things have stayed the same. Do people still feel a sense of failure if they don't have children? Yeah, they can. I know that personally. Even if a couple has done amazing things with their lives or a single person, has done incredible things with their life. There is still pressure, societal pressure to have children. And it's hard often to take what God gives you, to take what life gives you and find the blessing. But that's what God asks us to try to do to find the blessing. Are we sometimes impatient when we have a plan or society says it's supposed to happen this way and then this way and then this way and life doesn't roll out according to plan? Sure, we can get frustrated. We can feel judged. We can get impatient. And then when we finally have gotten over it and tried to move on, suddenly things can change again and it gets all turned upside down again. And we can have a hard time accepting sudden changes in our lives, accepting them and looking for the blessing, trying to find a blessing in what has happened. Recognizing that as much as we try, we can't control everything. Do we sometimes feel disappointed during this season, this holiday season? Because things don't happen according to our plans, our expectations. Yes, we do. We get so caught up in the thing that we want to happen, the way it's supposed to be so perfect that we can't enjoy what actually does happen. Be there and find the joy and the blessing in what does happen. So that's our challenge to find delight in surprises, to find the beauty 
in whatever happens. We need to ask God to help us take life, search for the blessing, and find joy in the unexpected. If we want coming home to be a blessing, we need to ask God to help us with the unexpected reversals within ourselves too. We need to pray that God help us to scatter the pride of our thoughts, of our hearts, and bring us down from our thrones when we get a little too high and mighty. We need to pray for opportunities to lift up the lowly, whether the lowly is somebody else or ourselves. And we need to pray that God will help us to hear the voices of people around us who are hungry, whose souls thirst for joy. Elizabeth and Mary, these women who lived a very, very long time ago in a place very far from where we live and very different. In their time, women were almost completely powerless Their lives were completely shifted during these events. These pregnancies were thrust upon them. They had no say in it. And they accepted it. They rejoiced in everything that God did. May God help us to do the same. Amen. Amen. I muted us. I muted Our us. hymn is My Soul Gives Glory to My God. I muted us. 98. Oh. Thank you, Tori. This is the time when we share our prayers of concern and celebration. How's everybody doing out there? 
Good. Good. If you have any prayer requests, you'll need to unmute if you're muted. I do. Go ahead. I would like to pray for my dad, Ray. He's he's not he's not bad or nothing, but he's just having a little bit of health issues, and I would just like to pray for him. Okay, we will do that, Sally. And if Ray can hear us, prayers for you, Ray. He's not. Now he left. He left. <laughs> okay. He went down we'll the basement. Pray, we'll pray for him anyway. <laughs> yeah, he's just having a little bit of issues, and it's nothing serious, but. Yes. Just make myself at ease. Um, so I just realized I am recording this. Would you like me to pause it as we share our prayer concerns? Yes. Let us pray. Dearest Lord, as Mary visited Elizabeth, we ask that you would visit us, your family. Be with us all, especially with those we've named aloud and in heart. Give us hope, hope peace, peace, joy, and love. And love. Purify, Purify our thoughts, words, words, and deeds, so, so that when that Jesus, Jesus comes, comes, he will he find a place prepared for his coming. coming. Oh, Heavenly Father, as we prepare ourselves for the coming of your Son, Fill our hearts and lives with peace. Grant that we may be just and merciful, ready to help the needs of our neighbors, and aware of your great love for all the world. Fill the Christian family with your spiritual gifts of forgiveness, patience, mutual love, and unending joy. All this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, 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 hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And, and it's not a temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is the time when we would give our offerings if we were together in worship. I ask that during the week you would offer yourselves to people as a gift, spread the joy of the season, spread the love of Christ when you interact with people. The happy people, the joyful people, the grumpy people, the hassled people, the people in a hurry, no matter how they are, no matter how this season is affecting them, share the joy. And we do it all for the furtherance of God's kingdom. Accept these gifts, Father, the gifts of our heart, the gifts of the abundance that you have given to us. Amen. Amen. And our closing hymn is Good Christian Friends Rejoice.
And it says Christ is born today and he's not yet, but soon, very soon. <laughs> Wonderful. And now hear the benediction. Brothers and sisters, good friends, rejoice. You need not fear the grave. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. 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 I hope to see all of you either December 23rd at East Lemon at 5.30 or December 24th at Lemon at 7 or both if you're feeling like you really, really need to hear things twice. <laughs> It'll be basically the same service at both places. Well, we're looking forward to it. Me too. Thank you. You're quite welcome and uh, be healthy. And please, um, when you're out in public, just wear a mask, just in case. Sure. Let's try to stay well. Amen. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.